Hello and welcome to Wednesday Slide Out Podcast. It's Wednesday evening. That means it's the debate show. If it's your first time listening, don't be shy. Make sure you get involved in the comments. Uh, we're live on YouTube. We're live on X. We're also live on Twitter Spaces as well. So if you want to come up and speak, <clears throat> Twitter Spaces is the place where you need to do that. If you're on YouTube, make sure you leave some comments. If you're watching on X or listening via Twitter Spaces, make sure you tweet us as well and get involved in the discussions. Uh, we'll be here for the next hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on what we're talking about and how many people's on and listening. Uh, if you're not going to be here for the next hour, but you want to listen back to this, make sure you check out Patreon. All of our debate show episodes go on there, uh, as well as ad-free versions of the main show, plus the preview show, of which you can listen to the chat with a QPR fan, which was recorded earlier on today. That's on there now. Uh, an extra time show that's recorded immediately after the main show as well patreon.com forward slash wtid pod is where you go for that right what we're going to be talking about on today's show well um that shit show that was uh monday afternoon middlesbrough two sheffield wednesday nil it finished um you know we can talk about that defeat some are saying it was back to the cisco days Danny Rill were visibly annoyed in the post-match press conference. You're going to see exactly why as well. What went wrong from your perspective? What did you make to that performance? What needs to change as well as we uh, go into QPR this weekend? Let us know by tweeting or coming up and having your say. Six cup finals. Last week it was eight. Now it's just six. We're effectively three points off safety with some of the results not going our way and our you know, poor goal difference. Can we do it? Do you think we've got enough in the tank to survive relegation? Or have you already resigned yourself to relegation? Again, come up and let us know what to, let us know your thoughts or get in the comments. Um, also, the fan engagement panel, the minutes from that most recent meeting were uh, posted yesterday on the official website. You know, the meeting was earlier on in March. One key takeaway for me, and probably most other people that have read it, is the number of season tickets, or should I say lack of number of season tickets that have been sold. Only 13,000 sold in those first three phases of sales. Uh, will it be Championship? Will it be League One? Obviously, we yet to find out, but, but you know, like I said, only 13,000 tickets sold. What do you think to that? Is that what you expected? Is that too too much too little again do come up and uh, and have your say obviously we can talk about anything that's Sheffield Wednesday related this evening uh, and first of all I've got Steve that wants to wants to speak Steve how are you mate you all right yes I'm very well thank you how are you yeah I'm fine thanks uh, it's what tw- I think it's 20 21 years to the day in it since uh, we was at Wembley Sheffield Wednesday against Sheffield United. I don't really need to say much more, do I, Steve? No, those days are long gone, aren't they? <laughs> yes, <laughs> way gone, way gone. I mean, I, I can't remember it. I would, I would have been, what, three and a half years old uh, at, at that point. Was you there, Steve? I was, I was indeed, yeah, yeah. Where, uh, where, do, where, where does that rank? Day. Where does that rank for you then in terms of like Sheffield Wednesday performances and kind of things that have happened you know whilst you've been following Sheffield Wednesday well for me Boxing Day is is and always will be the ultimate and I was lucky to be there for that as a as an 11 year old uh, but um, Wembley Wembley sort of in the, the and I think it's Boxing Day the League Cup win and then that that game probably my third third in my list it was amazing I think I think the one thing that that fixture did show actually um, is that what a massive football in City Sheffield is. Yeah. You know, that the two Sheffield clubs uh, went en masse to Wembley. I don't think there was a spare bus, uh, you know, within a, a, a massive radius of Sheffield, went on en masse down to Wembley and filled it. It was, an um, you know, an amazing atmosphere. Do you know what? Whenever you get to Wembley or anything like that, one, you want to see it red and blue, two contrasting colours. You know, you never want a team that's at Wembley to be playing in their away kit. You know, you want them to be in the home kits and uh and the other thing is filling both ends as well, in it really when you when you go down there. Obviously the last two times we've been there, we've not really had that luxury. Well we've filled our end, but the other team's not kind of filled their uh, end of the bargain, have they? Although it was red against blue the uh, you know, last time around, uh, I suppose they get away with bonds, they don't they? Really, with the, with the seats being red, it didn't it didn't look as bad for them, did it? As uh, as it perhaps would have done if it was the the other way around. Um, 
Anyway, that's enough about things that are, well, I'm about to say things that are in the past. Middlesbrough was in the past, but more recent, of course. Um, have you got over that performance on Monday? Because it, were, it weren't very good, would it? <laughs> It was it was absolutely dire, and I'm I'm still kind of scratching my head really to to, to understand uh, how the players were so pedestrian, so off it, uh, lacking in any kind of intensity or desire, and uh, allowed what I thought was a, a very below average Middlesbrough team look like a very good side when they were cle- they clearly weren't. But the contrast between that and the Swansea game was massive for me because I know a lot of people have criticised um, Danny's tactics mm. for this Swansea game but bearing in mind the fact that we didn't have Pervader we didn't have Bannon so we didn't have the normal creative influences in the team I thought his tactics were quite clever where he sort of played that kind of mid-block let them come on to us and um, and then as the game went on we created yeah. opportunities and we should we should have won the game comfortably I must admit I mean, at, the t- at the time Steve, like when when we were watching the game on uh, on Friday, yes, it was a bit frustrating, you know, when you're just watching, you're thinking, go on then, you know. But then when you step back and I think as the game kind of went on, you think you realise, well, this is obviously an instruction. And I think Danny Real had, had seen what Swansea do. Swansea liked to control the ball. And, you know, when we spoke to the Swansea fan before, Andy said exactly that, you know, and it's no surprise that, that that's how they came and, and wanted to play and, and dominate the possession. But they didn't do anything with it, and I think they want you to. You know, teams want you to press um, when when they're playing like that because then they want to break the press and they ca- you know catch on the counter attack. And it was almost a game of a game of chicken, really, weren't it? Really, it was that kind of who's gonna who's gonna give up first. And you know, we were we were just quite happy to do that. And I suppose you know from their point of view, from a Swansea perspective, they were probably thinking these are the home side; these need the points. You know, it, it probably shocked them. To be, to, to be honest, that we, that we played in that way. And it worked. Well, nearly worked. Yeah, I mean, from, from Danny's point of view, it, it, it worked beautifully. It's just that the players didn't do their part of the bargain and take the chances. Yeah. Yeah, there were some massive chances missed. I mean, I think the game was nil-nil when, when Volks missed that one. He's got to be doing better. I, I think when, when you look at it, goals is, is clearly the problem. But goals from other areas of the pitch, I think if you look at... You know, midfield. I think there's only there's Johnson, and then I think Bannon's got has he got one, two goals this season? One. Uh, yeah, I think I think one. Yeah. The Volks is. I don't think he's got any. If if he has, he's got one goal. Like the, there's not enough goals coming from uh, from other areas of the pitch at all. I mean, I'm just gonna bring. It, I'm gonna bring it up now. Um, Bannon's got one. Hendricks got one. Delgado one, um, and that's it. Marvin Johnson's got three. Everyone else, all right. You could say Masaba and Gasama are they midfielders, and wingers? You'd like to think they they would be getting in, in the goals, but goals from midfield and certainly goals from defenders and centre backs have been lacking somewhat this this season. And yeah, Volks had a chance. Um, Paul Valentin had a chance. Uh, we spoke about yeah. that on the on the pod at the weekend. Um, he's only scored two goals in his career, so uh, yeah, we, we weren't going to be expecting. Expecting much from him, but we, we certainly did make make chances, didn't we, Steve? We did. I mean, I mean, the the Volks one. He, he seemed to get his feet mixed up, didn't he? And mm. sort of just like shanked it when he actually had time to take a touch and pick his spot and put it in. The Paul one. I mean, all he's got to do is just pass it into the corner because he's he's near enough the goal, and he just tried to whack the cover off the ball, didn't he? And yeah. just like pulled it wide. Well, he had so um, much time, uh, didn't he? Really, he, yeah, he could have picked his yeah. spot or anything. I, like I said, I, I I was stood up, I had my arms aloft. I thought that that were going in, but yeah, just it's been the story of our season, though, hasn't it, Steve? Just not finishing chances. Well, we we just lack. We're not good enough, are we? I mean, I think I think we've perhaps in recent weeks got carried away with things, and I think mm. we've forgotten what a fundamentally poor squad we've got, and yeah. that you know, Danny Danny has been turning water. You know, as soon as we're on the still on the Easter. Been, he's been turning water into wine, and not he? And uh, getting the club, uh, the, the the team to play probably a, above what their actual actual ability is, and maybe I don't know with the pressure of the situation or whatever. Reality's bitten a bit this weekend. Yeah, but, but Monday wasn't. But to me, Monday wasn't down. <clears throat> wasn't down to lack of quality. There was there was something seriously wrong. I mean, I don't know whether something's gone off behind the scenes, but the the levels were just weren't there, were they? No, it were. I thought the first five or ten minutes looked all right. I, you know, 
Johnson had that chance early doors, that goes in, maybe it's a different story, but there were just a lot of walking. <laughs> and and, and the, the, if you said to me that these never played with each other, I would probably agree. Like, I mean, the midfield's been missing for for weeks and weeks. I think, obviously, that's probably down to the style that we're, that we're playing, but I think we get over running midfield far too often. You know, balls, second balls are dropping and we're... we're well, we're second to the ball every time, you know. It's always the opposition that's coming away with it, which I find incredibly frustrating and it's making things difficult. Um, but yeah, they they just they just weren't at the races. And I find that mad that at that point there was, what, seven games left? And, you know, that was the seventh game left of the season. And we're in the relegation zone. We've been in there all season. They must have known that, a decent result and we would have, would have been out of it and then to, to I mean look they, they're going to say that they, that they tried but from a fan's perspective I don't know about you but it just didn't look like they tried like I said I know they're going to say that they did but it's, it certainly didn't look like it given the other performances they put in it, the, the biggest clue for me was that was that second goal when you know they mm. they, they, they they broke out and they were they were sprinting like Linford Christie and um, our lot were just walking back, weren't they? Yeah. The, the two, two, of them, two or three of them got back, but the rest of them, some of them were were, were, were literally walking back. There was, it, it was, it beggared belief. Yeah. The the thing is, I mean, you, you look at the goal difference, and it's well, minus thirty three. It's absolutely shocking. Sixty four goals conceded, only thirty one scored. I think I put a tweet out the other day. I think there's only three teams out of the ninety two that are. That have actually scored less. Sheffield United and Everton, but they've played ten goals fewer than what uh, ten games fewer. Sorry, than what we than what we have. Um, I think the ones I want to say Northampton or maybe Shrewsbury, one of the two. Anyway, there's only there's only one of a team that scored less goals, and you know that that obviously shows. But it's not only that; it's, it's just the goals that we're conceding. And I was talking to a QPR fan earlier, um, and, and one thing I pointed out was. All the games that they've lost since the new new gaffers come in have only been by the odd goal. I think they they lost two 0 to Millwall. I think they lost two 0 to Middlesbrough, and that's it. You look at some of our games and some of our, some of our fixtures. Huddersfield a four 0 hammering. Um, there was a four 0 against Southampton. Six 0 against Ipswich. You know we're getting we're getting battered in in some of these games. It's almost like we, we go one 0 that one 0 down. And then I don't know. We, we we just can't seem to cope, can we? When we when we go a goal down, Steve. No, I think it's a it is a, a maybe a reflection on. Like I think it's reflecting on the quality of the squad and, and and maybe the mentality of a large majority of the squad. Where I don't know whether they've got PTSD from Cisco or what, but the the minute they go down, you can see the shoulders drop. There's just a lack. There's something lacking. Yeah. Uh, moral fiber. I don't. I don't know what what the what it is, but there's there's just something not right. I yeah. just. I just. I don't understand it. Particularly when you've got um, a, a coach like we've got who puts um, a great deal of uh, emphasis on attitude and mentality, and we've got yeah. we've, we've actually got a mental coach or psychologist or whatever who's permanently in the coaching staff. It's, I, I think it does come down though to the lack of. Like a talent, I suppose, in the squad. I've said it a few times. Danny Rail's been used to working with German nationals. He's, you know, again, top quality players at Bayern Munich. I know he's only been the assistant, but he's been around some players that are worth 10, 15, 20 times the, what, what some of our players are worth. And, you know, much, much better players. You see it in the Premier League. You see when Liverpool go a goal down. And they're not phased. They got two goals down. Still, they're not even that bothered. You know, they know they can. They've got enough to score three, four, five goals in in any game. Um, but I just don't think we we've we've not got that. You know, even in the, you know at the championship level, we we haven't got those players that can grab the game by the scruff of the neck and and I want to say game changers as well. You know, we've got Masaba, we've got Gasama. They, they, they players that get you on the edge of this, like on the edge of your seat and and make you stand up and. And they are exciting, but then they're not they're not proving enough to to turn games around. Um, Steve, do stick around. I've got Paul and Peter that want to uh, 
want to talk as well. There's a song about that in there, but uh, yeah, come on, Paul. Let's. Uh, what do you want to say, mate? Nothing really. Just um, jumped on and, and agreeing with everybody, agreeing with what you're saying. I think. I mean, I have my own thing going on about this squad. I don't think it's ever been good enough. I think we we knew. Well, you listen. You don't need a rocket scientist to know when you're signing players like Ashley Fletcher. We already know he's not good enough. Yeah. I knew the same about Hendrick as everybody else did. I just feel that we're a club that's shopping in the Aldi Whoop section. And I watched the game on. I didn't go to the Millsborough game. I watched it. Yeah. Uh, but I watched the one before. Who did we play? Swan- Forget Swansea on Friday. Swansea. Yeah. And I watched Masaba for the first 20 minutes. Look absolutely bewildered and disinterested and then i thought i said to my mate at the side of it went if he's still looking like this on 55 minutes he needs dragging off because he just doesn't look bothered he's not tracking back he's lazy if it's not going his way he gets mardy i watched the guy he stayed on for the whole game he then started the burger game i'm not just singling him out but i'm just talking about the fact of you know he shouldn't be playing and, and i'm watching the 21s the other day who i'm told aren't ready I've got to be honest with you. I start questioning everything from the top to the bottom of this club if they're not ready. I don't think watching Masaba taking a kid like Putty or the other lad, I can't remember his name, and putting him in could be any worse than what I'm actually watching. Some of these players, I think, when you buy even Paul Volta, you know, and, and, you know, I think the lad's doing well, you're buying them from second division Spanish clubs that nobody's even heard of yeah and you're saying here's the championship delgado a typical example you know and the one bits of quality we are getting bernard you know i i, I when i used to work for united I, I saw bernard a lot and and i went away with the team quite a lot and i saw him play at the side of tugzabi i think that was usually his pairing yeah and i remember when we signed him straight away i went how have we got him how have we got him and then i start reading it and then a couple of articles come out later he signed a year deal and it's like ah that's why because he plays for his national side for a year because he's got to play at a certain level and is he going to stay with wednesday mm, very doubtful and this is the problem the problem is the the it's we you know we go round and round and round but this is all on one man yeah, it's funny. I don't know if you saw Dom Housen's tweet earlier, earlier, t- did, yeah. earlier today. Yeah, I'll just re- for those that didn't, I'll just read out what he put. Um, well, he basically just outlined the finishing positions under uh, Chan Series since he bought the club: fifteen, sixteen, sixth in the championship. Then it was fourth. Then it was fifteenth, twelfth, sixteenth, twenty fourth, and relegated. Then we finished fourth in League One. Then we finished third, obviously we're promoted, and obviously this season there's a big question mark over it, but we're currently sitting, as we all know, 23rd in the Championship. He then outlined Milan Mandarich's um, you know, finishing positions while he was the chairman. Uh, 20, uh, yeah, 2010, 2011, obviously he came in uh, like halfway through that season, we finished 15th in League One. Then we finished second and obviously got promoted. Then we finished 18th, 16th, and 13th, and obviously that's when uh, Desh Ponchansiri uh, took over the football club. Um, and kind of just outlining there, obviously under Milan Mandric, there was a steady progression under those five five years, kind of solidifying as itself as a as a championship outfit. And then, yeah, you can't really say that under under Chansiri. I know all everyone's going to say, yeah, but then first two seasons were fantastic mm-hmm. and everything and I get that and no, we weren't complaining when we were going to Wembley playing Hull and, and beating Arsenal and everything else. We weren't complaining when Hooper and Forestier were playing but we are complaining now, aren't we, Paul? Well, listen, I mean, at the end of the day, you look at the training ground and we've got two pitches and he spent reportedly over £300 million pound what on earth? What on earth has it gone on? I mean, I, I know it's gone on wages. I know it's gone on transfers. But I, I, I don't want to talk about things like that. I want to talk about, if we start looking at players and things like, you know, where we are. On, in 2000, when did we play Hull at Wembley? Was it 216? Yeah, it was, yeah. What did everybody say we needed at the side of Bannon? Just, we, all we need really is a big D army guy. Somebody to win the ball, pass it to Bannon play out wide, whatever. Have we ever had one? No. We've had Bambo DRB that obviously isn't good enough. And we've cut Dan- Danny Vol, for all the people that are slagging Danny Vol off, I'd just like to say a couple of things. He's trying to implement a system, obviously, 
that that would work if he had the right clientele. If he doesn't have the right clientele, that's great. But I don't think these players would do well in any of, you know, whether it's long ball or what. I don't think we're good enough. And I think that the problem that we've got again is we've got to back him. But is Chancery going to back him? I just think if we go down this season, it's going to get very, very toxic, very, very quick. Paul, a lot because of people are saying that Danny Rill's getting away scot free, and he um, he picks the team, he picks the tactics. What what do you say to those sort of comments? Um, I think a lot of people agree when they see the team sheet, it's the best we've got. Um, I, I understand what people are saying, and I'm not saying he is scot free. No, not at all. I think he's made dreadful mistakes, but he's he's made better. Positive, you know, he's got us within two points, and I couldn't see anybody else with what we had doing that. I mean, you look at the side, and you know, when you know, we, we haven't got a fullback. I mean, we're asking Johnson at 33 to play out of his skin every week, he's just not going to do it. He can't do it. You know, you've got Paul Volta who can't really defend in front of them, you've got Kasaman and Masab who can't track back. You know, you've got Diaby that really shouldn't be playing a ball. But where's it going to come? If we go long, I I don't understand where we're going to win the balls because if you play Karamati up front, he's not going to hold it up. There's the the debate on Gregory, who is probably the best player to hold the ball up. Michael Smith comes on and looks, to be honest, like a cart horse every time he comes on. He he doesn't look quick enough. The midfield, I feel that we're asking too much of a 34-year-old Barry Bannon running his nuts off constantly. And at the side of him, he's got Will Voltz, who I don't know if you saw against Leeds, but I think he looked really off it and and since then he doesn't he still looks like he hasn't got a tackle I mean I've well, just got to say I was speaking to somebody the other day about Luongo and the first thing that came back was yeah he was always injured at Wednesday but he's not at Ipswich why yeah yeah and I know th- these that's always been massive question marks and it is when you when you talk about Massimo Luongo it is a very much it, that happens with Sheffield Wednesday don't it? players leave and seem to do quite well <laughs> elsewhere, or, or well, they come to Sheffield Wednesday and they don't seem to hit the heights they were hitting before. It's, uh, I mean, look, on the on the Luongo one, I I can see why we didn't keep him on because I think if we'd have kept him on and he'd have got injured, everyone had gone, "Why the fuck have we kept him? He couldn't, you know, he, he, he couldn't play three games. We are we are missing one or whatever." Games, he's not injured for Ipswich, so what's going on off the field? How are they managing him that Wednesday aren't? And I'm, I know. That's right, you know. But we, we, if we managed him, we should be managing him like they are. I mean, I think he's played yeah. every game. It's strange, isn't it? Because Barry, ba- I, know, I know Barry Bannon has been injured, or he, he missed the Swansea game because of injury and went off against Ipswich. But up until that point, I think he's he, he can count on one hand the amount of games that he's missed. So why can he? Why can he stay fit? And why is it everyone else that's getting injured? Why? Why is Windass playing two games out of three in his time yeah, well, at Sheffield Wednesday? Um, I worked that out a few weeks ago. It might, you know, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to get to the point of one in two, but it, it was certainly, you know, it was certainly available for two out of three league games last time I checked. You know, why is it that Callum Patterson's out for so long? Like, you, you know, know, these are all these are all things that I think if somebody came in on a and bought the club, the first thing you build from. I mean, I went to see um, the, what, what's it called, the Dragon, Stephen Bartlett, the other day, mm. and, and he was talking about how you build a business brick by brick. You start at the bottom and you build it up. You come in and you look at the grassroots of everything and you build the first brick. Yeah. And you look at our training ground and it's like, why haven't we brought anybody from the youth system through since Palmer and latest Kadamatra? It's not good enough. And if they're not producing them, something has to change. I want to take you back, Paul, then, to when, to when Dej Chancery first took over the football club. If he'd have come in and built a new training ground like Sheffield United are doing now you know they've got they've got Premier League facilities for their academy and obviously their academy blinds us already so they're going to be obviously producing much better talent in years to come which is going to going to help them you know if it had come in and, and, and built a new training ground and, and spent a lot of money on the infrastructure and not brought in any uh, any decent players what 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 would you have said then would you would you been happy with that or did you? I think long term. I think every Wednesday fan that you speak to it now, or well, has always been long term. You know, if we went down this season, but it was full of players giving everything and for three or four of them from the youth side giving everything, then I think Wednesday fans are realistic to think, you know what, we're actually trying to build something and it's going to come good. I think throwing everything all on black and spinning it and going, let's hope it comes, is exciting at first. But we mm. all knew, didn't we? We all knew. You know that 
this guy's coming in with relentless pots of money. We thought it was going to happen. We thought we were going to get that side that challenged, but we also thought that he'd have a brain to develop the ground and everything else, and it just seemed to not happen. Yeah. Paul, do do stick around if you can, mate. Thanks for your comments, as always. Uh, I've got Peter that wants to talk as well. Let's go to a few of the comments. Uh, Michael Brown said, the Owls can still do it. Plymouth have sacked their manager, so must be in turmoil within catching dist- distance and Birmingham are not safe either. Yeah, I do agree with that one, but let's just hope they don't get that uh, new manager bounce. Although I don't think they're going to be bringing in a new manager between now and the end of the season, but they're certainly going to... Uh, you know, certainly got rid of the one that's not been working. Um, and there's another one from Paul. How much did we spend in the first couple of seasons? I'm just having a look. Um, this is on transfermarket.co.uk, so not gospel, but um, uh, 15, 16, Fernando Forestieri, just over 4 million. Gary Hooper, just shy of uh, just shy of four. Marco Matthias, that was three. Lucas Joao, two and a half. Royce Wiggins, he were a million. Um, Louis McGugan, 500,000 and the following season Adam Reach just shy of 6 million Alman Abde 3.5 million pound was spent on him uh, and then uh, a few bits on Fox and Winall uh, and then of course Jordan Rhodes which it says here 11.7 million it is in euros so maybe that is does equate to the 10 million pounds and 3 million on Eust Van Arken as well Peter how are you mate you all right uh, yeah, not too bad. It was uh, a bit of a depressing, uh, depressing weekend again with the uh, two results. But yeah, we're so close, aren't we, Peter? Just you know, we're we're we're, we're just we we were so far behind, and we've we've got to the point where you know, in both of those games, we could have done it. As in, we could have got out of the bottom three, and it has to go down as two two massive missed opportunities, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, exactly. And and again, again, this weekend's another opportunity, but. Uh, I, I I just can't see us. I don't think we've got enough strength in depth. I really don't. Um, I, I had a bit of a rant tonight on praise and grumble about uh, the, the lack of effort, and Paul's just mentioned it about Masaba Gasama, and the, the thing that we, the thing sort of the excuse we gave them in the early part of the season for their inconsistencies were the fact that they were young, inexperienced players, and they're going to blow hot and cold. But at the minute. They're not even blowing tepid, either of them. In fact, you know, Gasama came on for the second half and looked absolutely, well, just did look totally disinterested. You're seeing arguments break out on the pitch. Uh, yeah, I've seen someone else mention that as well, Peter. Yeah. Who, who, was it that, who was it that's been arguing? For me, for me and Johnson were having a real go at each other in the first half. While, whilst it was nil-nil, this was early on. And then, obviously, when the second goal went in, that looped off Bannon's knee or thigh, uh, he turned around and his first sort of first uh, person he had to go at was Will Volks and then Volks is having a go at Gasama and I, it, it just smacks of unrest within the camp um, you know, we, we all know that Danny Rolls, a young manager, is certainly not the, the finished article by a long, long way but uh, and it was, it's very easy for us to um put him on a pedestal uh, simply because Cisco was so so poor in terms of um, what kind of manager he was and what, what he could he couldn't he had no motivational skills so and this is not putting a dampener or trying to put an attempt or attempting to put a dampener on what Danny Rose done but and we all if you remember we all we all laughed and scoffed at the time but we all know that any manager, Neil Warnock included, Chris Wilder included even, would have got more out of that Wednesday squad than Cisco. Sadly, however, in my opinion, the performances of certainly Monday and the first half an hour against Swansea were very Cisco-esque, which leads me to believe we just can't get out of it. I just don't think we've got the depth, the, the strength in depth. You're asking... if. You, you and Paul just talked about it now. You've got Kadamarshi, 18, 19 year old, playing up front on his own. Um, you know, there ain't a 19 year old striker in the world could do that. Yeah. Let alone ask, asking Kadamarshi in his first season to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, just, I'm just looking. You mentioned Masaba and Gasama. Just looking at their kind of seasons gone by, you know, um, Masaba's been at, been at a few different clubs, but 
Uh, the most games he's played, 29 games for, I think it's Herenveen, is it? Um, Herenveen. Herenveen, yeah. yeah, in the Dutch league. Uh, he played 29 games for, um, I don't even know that who that team is there, in the in the Jupiler Pro League for a team there. Um, yeah, you know, he's played 37 games so far this season. It's most games he's ever played in a, <clears throat> in a season in his career. I don't know if he's been ever involved in a, in a relegation scrap where, you know, I mean, I, t- I tweeted during the game, there was a point where Volks and Bannon was down at the, um, watching it on the, I don't know where the, the, the you were sat on uh, on Monday, but certainly from the, where the camera was, it was in the far corner, uh, must have been yeah. in the second half. And they're just doing little flicks and flicking it to each other, like flicking yeah. it in the air. And I was like, stop with the fucking flicking the ball about. Like, yeah. It's nice when it comes off, and it's it's a luxury to have. And and people are probably going to be saying, yeah, but it comes off more more times than it done. But when it done when it, when it's not coming off, and when you know when chips are down, and you, you I don't I think the score was two nil at this point. It might have even been one nil. You are like I don't want to see it. I want to see, I want to see the team go back to basics, pass and move, little triangles, get into space, grit, determination, big tackles, and I want I want to see some fight from from Sheffield Wednesday, and I want to see that you know. And if we fall short, I don't want to be turning around and saying that they've not tried. And again, I know they're going to say. They, they, they're putting 110 percent in every single game, and that's obviously what we expect. But I want to see that on the pitch. I want to, I want to walk away and go. You know what? They gave it their all, but it just wasn't good enough. Do you know what I mean? If it, if it's not going to be good enough. Yeah, well, that, that's exactly my comments tonight. The, 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 the actual absolute minimum we expect as supporters is, is is for a player, the squad, to run their blood to water. The minute I see uh, any player, and I saw I saw three or four players particularly for the second goal, not even chasing back, Masaba, Gasama, Johnston and Volks. They need to be coming off that pitch, bollocks. Absolutely yeah, bollocks. I know there's only six well, games left or whatever. You, and you could Remember my comments from last season about Deli Bashiro, he was the, and I said then, he was the biggest non trier in the history of football. Well, the, these four, or those certainly those two, Masaba and Gasama, would, would give him a one four seven break in the non trier states because they just aren't bothered. So I'm sorry, but the, the young, inexperienced... Uh, excuse doesn't wash with me and we can't afford to be having the young unexperienced non-triers or potential non-triers in our team I I, I, I said on tri- Twitter at the weekend I, I'd go back to basics go 4-4-3 or oh, sorry 4-4-2 uh, or 4-3-3 to be fair 4-4-3 would be better actually to no, be fair yeah. I think we, yeah, I think we still, might need that extra player still probably, still probably <laughs> find a way to lose. go back to go back to 4-3-3 Get the basics right. I, I've, I've, I've heard on good authority Pedersen's back in this weekend. Christ. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just get uh, just get Fletcher up front and then we'll be all right, won't we? Well, I, I'm, I, 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 I've also been told there might be a little surprise up top as well, but not Fletcher. So Okay. Be, I think it might be the good, the bad and the ugly, I'm afraid. But uh, And Paul mentioned about Bannon, and, and he's spot on. He's 34 now. He, he, can't, he can't do it forever. Plus... You've got you've got to factor in the fact that Bannon last year was was fantastic against the, against League One defenders and midfield players, uh, and it was it was arguably the last two years have arguably been two of Bannon's best seasons, hmm. um, and he's he's not having to bust the gut like he is this year. He's having to raise his game 20 percent every match because he's playing against far far better players. Yeah, you know it's that it's the whole thing rolled into one, and it's it's. Everything's working against Wednesday, and that's not a, a woe is me comment. That's a that's a fact. The, the Premiership's getting stronger, so will the Championship, and the top of the Championship is a mile. It's absolutely miles away from what we are. I said it many we, times we, last season, Peter. Yeah. That we 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 didn't finish his chances. You know, Smith got these yeah. twenty goals a season, but he could have had forty with the amount of chances that he had, and, and other players as well. Um, Gregory could have had you know over twenty goals as well, but. The, the the only saving grace we had last season was the fact that because we were coming up against the likes of, you know, your Forest Greens and your Morecambe's and and the, these teams like that, you're going to get more, more chances. So you know well, we're, we were missing we're chances, say- but we're having lots of chances. We're now having we average less than I think it's less than forty five percent possession on average um, in you know this season. I know the first ten games have probably skewed that somewhat. There's been a lot of games under Danny Real where we've not had over fifty percent possession. When you're not having the ball, you're not going to be creating as many chances on average. I know some people are going to look back and go, "Yeah, well, we we created more 
against Swansea and only had 25% of the ball. I get that. But over overall, you know, when you're not having much of the ball, when you do get a chance, you've got to put it away. You look at the first yeah. chance against um, against Middlesbrough. Right, I know it's a difficult one that Johnson had, but you've got to be in the target. Like if, you, if you're not hitting the target, and how many times, you know, I think um, I, I had a look and in terms of shots that we've had, we're, we're well up there, you know, in terms of in, in the league. But you look at like shots on target, and we are bottom for the number of shots yeah. that we've had on target this season. Maybe maybe Rotherham are worse, but when you look at goals per shot ratio, we are definitely bottom. Well, because we're, we're bottom for number of goals that we've scored, so that's it. That's an absolute given. Um, so there's no surprise that we're that we are where we are, and we just got to yeah. There's just just a multitude of different things that have just I kind mean, of gone wrong. It, 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 t- two weeks ago, that that bottom of the table was like an almost a nine, ten team league. Now, after last Saturday's results, it becomes a it becomes a four or five team league. Um I fear the worst after this weekend, I really do. And that's not been that's not been doom and gloom. I'm just being realistic. QPR, last eight games, one five drawn two, lost one against Wednesday, who oh, are you can't even it's not even yo yo form. It's it's absolutely rubbish. It's you know it's it's ten to two. We're in Roxy's and we've got a, we've got a, we've got a face like John Merrick. You know what I mean? It's we ain't, we ain't, you ain't got a cat in house chance. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I mean, can we can we have any positivity, Peter? Is is there any positivity that we can draw? I mean, I'm just looking at the form table. Last six matches: Uddersfield, no win in the last six. Plymouth, they've only had got one point in the last six games. Um, who else are down there? Birmingham, they've got one win and a draw, four defeats. Blackburn, one win. Uh, well, they, I think they've had one win since November or something ridiculous like that. No, I, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we have got a. It's the last, the last two performances tell me a different story. It's not a collective unit. I really think there's infighting going off. That, you know, it's not, it's not a happy ship. And with so many players coming up to the end of the contracts next year, eighteen players out of contract, we're going to be left with nine or ten players. But you, t- you spoke about Joey Pooty earlier and the other lad on on uh, on Kowal. On 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 it, on it Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've I've championed Joey Pooty for a long time and and said you know if if they're good enough, get him in. Maybe next um, season he'll have that chance if we're in League One. You never know. Yeah, I, I think, uh, and then then you've got the other you've got the other added equation of the off the field matters of the the stadium, the training grounds, the. Uh, everything about the place, it's just, you know, we've gone from having a fantastic stadium to one that, you know, players aren't going to want to come and play for us in front of less than 20,000 crowds, because that's what it's going to be. You know, you're going to have 13,000 plus a couple of thousand multi-year season tickets, plus a three, 4,000 walk-up. You're, look, you're going to be lucky to get 20,000 fans in there. What, what did you think to that announcement then, or from those minutes that that there has been only 13,000 season tickets. I mean, I don't know how many we sold this season, ten, but... 10,000, ten, we were sold not, not on 20,000. I was told, Trevor Braithwaite media guy told me we'd sold 20,000 last year in total. Um, so that's nearly, <laughs> well, we're talking, what, how many? That's like 60, 60 70% uh, of, of last season. Yeah. What do you, what yeah, do you think so What do you think to that? Is that is that what you expected? Is that is that less than you expected, more? Uh, it's a bit of a shock to be fair because I think yeah I thought we had enough sort of fans who would carry on regardless but obviously fans are voting with the pocket uh, through the pockets which is understandable you know I I I said earlier tonight that you know I caught I, I put extra hours in for my ticket to you know I worked a bit harder that week and shifted me, did my work pattern around to go to Ipswich you know yeah. cause I know I got a, a four hundred mile drive uh, a four hundred and fifty mile drive there and back and I'd, and when when Danny Roll decides to shuffle the pack. Not a lot I can do about it except support the team, and you walk away with a six 0 spanking. Different kettle of fish. You go to Middlesbrough, and you think well, half a chance here, half a chance because they aren't that good a side. And to me, it does look they, they they never got out of second gear. No, we didn't test we didn't test the defence. I think the goalkeeper had one save to make in the second half from Ugbo's shot where he touched around the post. For me, they were going from back to front far too easily. For yeah, me, they, they were just by, they were just bypassing the midfield, and it were they were getting to their front men far too easily, and then obviously they were, then they were getting, then they were supporting them, and before you know it, we were camped in our own half, and mm. we were finding it very difficult to get out. Obviously, the passing out from the back, it, it really didn't work, did it? 
you, you know from my comments about Delhi Bashiro last year, uh, I, I don't, I can't, have no time for any player who has quality but then doesn't use it. And Delhi Bashiro were prime for that. Gasama and Masaba have got similar, equal talents in, by the bucket load. But when they don't track back and they don't help out the other nine in the squad, then they may as well be sat at home on their Xbox and, and not even getting involved because they're that's not a, they're not team players. They've not they've not learned that part of the game yet, and we can't afford to be carrying players at this stage of the season. You know, we've, I, but I, I, I said right at the start, I just don't see where we can get the. It's, it's certainly going to be we need te, we need ten, possibly twelve, even twelve points looking at the goal difference. I can't see us getting 12 points from last six games, James. I really can't. Got one. Got a comment from Joe. Pete, always so negative. Remember him saying after Southampton, oh, he didn't know where next point we're coming from. Then we won five out of six. I think you need to, time to go back and listen to all my podcasts when we were going to... Oh, all stuff when I said we were going to win 3-0 and 4-1. It's not it's not always so negative at all. It's it, it, I, I've been the most positive when everybody else has been down, but... I'm being realistic and I'm talking from experience. And I, I just can't see it. I really can't. I want I want to be wrong, but I just cannot see it. Do you know what? One thing I would one thing I would agree with you is that I try and be as positive as, as I can be. Um, but there's only so much that you can have, and and yeah. I think I think I think these last two games, the two before Ipswich and Leeds, I I, I got that. Look, the six nil was a bit of a shock. I I thought we would be better than that. But it is what it is. It's still no points, and the goal difference is shite anyway. So it don't really matter. Um, I do. I do think, to be fair, he did knock some stuffing out of the players, and you know, it's not never nice, is it, to get a, an absolute yeah. pasting like that. Um, but you know, you, you brush yourself off. It's an international break. Let's forget about it. And I think you know, I'd like to have thought they'd have had the mentality to to move on from that. It is just the last two. You know, Swansea. I think the performance was all right against Swansea, but you know, missing your chances and then conceding a. You know, a, a, a corner. All right, we can we can complain about the referee and the fact that it was handball and everything else. But top and bottom is we conceded another goal from a from a set piece, yeah. and then that's frustrating. And then you, and, but then you look and you go, well, it, you know, other results didn't really, didn't you know, didn't go against us. We're still in it. And then you've got a chance against Middlesbrough. All right, again, a, a tough game away from home, but we're in, we're in a. A relegation scrap, you know, you expect them to put a performance in, but they just didn't. A message message to the guy who's just uh, uh, sent you the message. Tell him to go to my Twitter feed, ChunkyBoy61, and have a look at the video I put on last week when I I took at Middlesbrough on Monday. Have a look at Sal Bibbo taking corners. That's how you take a corner, (laughs) you know. you, You can laugh, James, but it's true. It's, you know... We who's who's that other lad? Who's that other lad? By the way, I, I don't even. He, he's yeah, um. Pierce he, Charles. No, 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 not in that video. I mean, no. so when 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 they're warming up and what have you, I don't think he's a coach. Well, I don't I don't know what he what his job role is, but he's got bald head and he's got a bit black beard. Um, oh, he's the he's the, uh, he's the kit. He's one of the kit lads. He, he's yeah. fa- he's fantastic. Him, I think we need to get him on set pieces. He's brilliant. <laughs> you see him when he's picking balls up. He he <laughs> he put some top bins. They were against yeah. against Rotherham. He, no, he, you you watch if you get if you get to Wolvesbrook and watch watch the keepers doing the corners uh, and the free kicks. You, you watch Sal Bibbo and watch him watch him hit the ball. From the edge of the box at, uh, at James Beadle, he might be able to hit, hit across, but I don't think he can get up and down. To be fair, he's and... got. Oh, yeah, I don't care if he's up. <laughs> if he, I, I, you know, I, I'd have him on just to play, just to set the corners. A, boy, a bit like American football, where they bring the exactly, guy on just to yeah, keep the ball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe when rules changed and we have roll on roll off subs, then maybe maybe we might that might have to come in. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure at the moment. Uh, Peter, do uh, do stick you around, mate, people. if you can. I'll always appreciate the comments. Do right, do do get involved as well, everyone else. Uh, I'm going to come to Steve in a second, and we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about QPR. I'm just going to read a few more of the tweets out. Uh, Tom says probably not ju- just me, but I feel so deflated at the minute. Especially that performance against Borough on Monday. Yeah, I, I think that that was my sentiments exactly. Deflated. Um, he also went on to say we've dropped so many points this season when we've been winning one nil, and it always finishes one one. I'm not too sure about that because I think we were saying the other day we don't draw many games. Um, I'm not too sure how many points we have lost from winning positions. I'll have a look at that in a second. Um, Matt's 
on YouTube, he said one of the concerning things that I think has been overlooked is even when we put a very attacking team out, we aren't scoring goals. And even in that four-game winning streak, we scraped the wins. Um, and then also went on to say, not sure you can just forget a 6-0 pace in even after an international break. It does create uncertainty in trust between players. I do think that had been a turning point in the season. Yeah, what is it about uh, Ipswich and being turning points? Obviously, we look at the last... Last season at Portman Road and Michael Smith missing that chance and and yeah six nil paced in this season as well it just it just knocked the stuffing out of us to be fair um, but anyway let, Steve let's uh, let's look ahead to QPR then on Saturday um, we need a reaction Steve don't we big time we do but I'm I'm very very worried about this game because I think QPR seem to uh, Seem to have got into a groove, don't they? They're a they're a big, strong side as well. They don't concede many go- corners. They don't concede uh, many goals, Steve. I think I, I was talking to, like I said, the QPR fan earlier. Just a reminder: if you want to listen to that, you can listen to the preview show over on patreon.com forward slash WTID pod. Nice little plug there. Um, but no, he he said that since Marty Sifuentes has come in, which was just before. Is it just before Danny Real? You know, I think just a bit after Danny Real came in. Um, only Leeds have conceded less goals than what they have. I mean, they have had a, an issue at the other end, hence why they've been down where they are. But they don't concede many goals, and the um, the, the games that they do lose, like I mentioned earlier, they lost they've lost two 0 twice or lost by a two goal scoreline twice. The other ones it's been the odd goal here and there, so they're always in the game. Uh, you know, right up until obviously the, the final whistle um and he even said they'd take a point against us because then that would mean that you know what what's the gap to just have a look at the the league table now they're seven points ahead of us so there'd be seven points ahead with five games to go you know that we'd need to win three of his last five games which it's not really happening that is it uh, steve no, no, and, and and look at it from their point of view. They seven points in front of the Beatles on Saturday. That's ten points. That's us completely out of it. So yeah. I would imagine their manager is going to be looking at this game and thinking, "We win this. This is the We've chance." Isn't it? Done it. I mean, yeah. could could that play yeah. into our hands a little bit if they're if they're going a bit gung ho? We can, you know, uh, we might be able to catch them on the break a little bit. Cause I can't see us, you know, a, a, a side that just sits in, and I can't really see us breaking a side down like that, to be fair. I don't know. Well, QPR's a, um, a strange ground as well because it's very compact and it's a very small pitch. Awful camera angle at QPR. Is that the one? Where, that's the one where the camera's almost like pointing downwards, isn't it, when uh, when they're on yeah. the near, near side touchline? Yeah. Yeah, awful. Yeah, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm very intrigued about what, what Peter was... Uh, was talking about in terms of um, that there's going to be a surprise in, in in the forward line on Saturday. Could it could it be a comeback for Mr. Gregory? Do you think? Could be. Um, I don't know. Michael Smith is he is he coming back up for? Obviously, he's been on the bench, hasn't he? A few mm. times. Um, I don't know. I mean, would you welcome a change up top? Is, do you think that's where the problem lies, or what? what, what I, I what think our, all our problems. I think all our problems are in the midfield area because we lack. Um, if you if you look at the other teams, we like a player with legs who can get up and down the pitch, kind of a box to box kind of a player. I'm just going to say, Steve, do we do we miss George Byers? Well, I don't think George Byers is that player. I, I think George Byers, and I'll probably upset some some Wednesday fans. I think there's a, there was always a big bromance with George, wasn't there? And justifiably so in the in the League One team because he was he was a good player. We couldn't rely on him for fitness though. And I, I looked at him when he played in the championship games, and I just don't think he had the legs and the power and the strength to be effective in the in the championship. And we needed to, in my opinion, upgrade George in the summer and and bring a proper box to box man in, proper athlete, because that that's 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 where we're getting done. And and because of the lack of depth in midfield, we, we we're going to struggle to play a three, aren't we? So we like playing two all the time. We get we get outnumbered in the middle in, in a lot of the games because it's a three on two and that I think that is where all our problems lie well along with the lack of goal scoring obviously but I think midfield is our biggest weakness yeah and I think on on, on Monday as well Bannon were playing so deep and obviously Volks is that 
deep lying playmaker if you play a football manager you know he is he is that one you know breaks it up he can uh, start a few moves and what have you so he's always he's, you never see him you know getting forward I, I know he had that chance against Swansea when he got into the box and which you know I do want to see more of that but yeah when you when you've got two players playing so deep it's just easy for you know for the opposition just to bypass you know Ugbo's playing in that in that 10 role just be, you know either, either just behind um Cads or he's playing out on the right hand side and it's just so easy for him just to bypass us and, and, and get past and yeah it's a it's it's a real struggle. I mean do you, do you see any changes Steve for the for the game on Saturday from the team that played uh, that played last time I and mean, I'll just read out the the starting lineup from from Monday's game. Um let's have a look. It were obviously Beadle in goal. Uh, well, it's taking ages to to load up, um, but well, yeah, do you, do you expect any changes, to Steve? Well, if he's if he's fit, Deshaun Bernard's got to come straight in because um, I mean the old playing out from the back question. When Deshaun Bernard plays, we're a little bit more effective playing out from the back because he's a lot more comfortable on the ball than the other centre half. So get your prayer mats out and hope that he's fit on Saturday. Although the noises coming from Danny Rowland suggest otherwise, it doesn't sound like he'll be fit for Saturday. Um, the, the other interesting one for me is that he's not started Gassama and Masaba together in the last two games. Is that because, is one of the reasons for that, because he can't trust them to put the work in Possibly. when they both play together? Possibly. But then, you know, you know no disrespect to Kadam Archer, but I think he only started on, on Monday because he scored that goal on Friday, which, you know, rightly so. Um, I think it's just a bit of a too much of an ask for him at the moment in this relegation running. Um, you need... I, I, I don't know what we need. I, I've no idea. I don't know if I don't know if switching to Michael Smith is is the answer. I, I, I just I just want a performance. I just want a battle. I want someone a, a team that can battle hard, put that the hundred percent effort in. Go right to the end as well. Go for the full full ninety minutes. But then also, having said that, you know you don't want them just running around like headless chickens, do you? Because I kind of saw that a little bit on Friday, you know, near the end. They were Wilkes came on and he were just running around like a nutter, weren't he? Um, didn't really know what he would what he were doing, and, and and that really didn't didn't help either. So I don't know. I don't I don't know what I want. It might it, there might be a case for maybe playing Smith, and, and I know this is a negative way of looking at it, but he does give us extra insurance for defending corners, don't he? Because he is good at that. <laughs> yeah, he's got the height, hasn't he? Yeah, he's like he'd yeah, like he, to does, think he that. wins a lot of. He does win a lot of headers, uh, a bit like New Year used to actually. You know, a lot of headers in the, um, you know, in, in our box. I mean, uh, 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 be far be it from me to tell Danny Roll what to do, but maybe he ought to look at the defensive structure we had from corners last season because that worked, didn't it? Against you know the League One teams that probably rely on set plays more than Championship teams. We defended set pieces really well last season. I know the season before we didn't. But last season we were we were pretty good at defending set pieces, so maybe he needs to look at the defensive structure that we had and do something similar because it's that sort of outswinging near post corner that seems to be doing us, doesn't it? You know, you know that the outswing yeah. to the front post. Do you know what? I watched that the goal. Um, obviously, it's gone down as a Michael Hecker own goal uh, on on Monday afternoon, and I've watched that and I looked at that the ball that we put in by I think it's Greenwood that, that put the ball in. Far, far superior to any ball that we've been putting into the box. You know, you couldn't. I mean, I know I questioned Beadle at the weekend. Uh, oh, sorry, the other day. Sorry, Monday night, saying should he have come for it? And and I, I think that if a ball lands in your six yard box, that's got to be the keeper's, regardless. But you look at the ball and the way that it comes in, the pace on it, that it, it, the height, the pace. I think he, I don't know if he hits it like a knuckle ball or whatever, and and gets that dip on it, and and it drops in the six yard box, and. Well, causes chaos and ends in the back of the net, doesn't it? So, you, you you look at that, and I look at us, you know, the corners that we've had. I think we've had the most, or one of the most set piece chances in the in the championship. You know, so that's from corners and from from free kicks, of course. But yet scored about four, I think, or five goals from set pieces, which is obviously really poor. Um, and yeah, I mean, what, go on then. What what score do you see see it finishing? Steve on uh, on Saturday. I think we're going to lose. I think we'll lose two 0 I, I just can't see. I can't see. Can't see us even getting a draw unless something. You know, there's dr- a dramatic change and improvement in the attitude of of certain members of that team. I just can't see how we're going to go to a 
a team like QPR are flying really at the moment and getting anything. I just cannot see it. Yeah, they're uh, they're loving their their manager Marty Sifuentes. They're a bit like us as well with Danny Rill. The only difference is obviously he's got his um, he's got his team out of the relegation zone. Finally, they they like us were stuck in the relegation zone for for quite a while. But yeah, they've. Uh, They've got out of it now. Steve, thanks for your comments, mate. I'm just going to come to Paul if he's still there, but I'm just going to read a few uh, messages out. I've uh, got a couple on YouTube. Uh, Michael Brown, QPR can't afford to lose that match against relegation rivals. Like yeah, like we said, if they win, that's 10 points, the gap to us, and they can probably tick us off as a team that, that can't catch them. Um, Matt has said, weren't nearly all Baez's games under Cisco? I agree. I think our midfield is our weakness, though. Bayer's going out on loan, though, probably allowed Pervada in, uh, but we probably needed both, not one or the other. Yeah, I think wages, if, if that is the case, and I've said that uh, as well, that you know, one out, one in, if it was the the case on, on wages, then, yeah, not really much that we could do. Um, just looking in terms of the games that he played, yeah, he played all of the games that Cisco was here. Didn't start every single one, but certainly played most of them. Um, did play quite a few under Danny Rail um, up until January the first, and then uh, and then obviously yeah he went off to to Blackpool. But no, he did play played just about as much as many under under uh, Danny Rail as he did under Cisco. <coughs> Twenty two games he played George Byers so far this season in the blue and white stripes. Um, Paul Saturday's game mm-hmm. against QPR. We need a better performance than we did against Middlesbrough. It goes without saying, doesn't it? Really. Yeah, I think so. Just going back to what you're saying about Byers, you know, whether he was um, the answer, you know, obviously he wasn't, and so was so wasn't Backinson. However, they, they weren't replaced. You know, Backinson went; he wasn't replaced. And I'm not saying that we should have kept him because he wasn't good enough potentially, but he wasn't replaced. And then Byers went, obviously, to bring Pervader in a completely different player, leaving the vulnerability of Bannon and Volks. I mean, it's just absolutely dreadful. And you know, the the, the thing is, James, as well. I don't actually think it's Danny Wall's decision all of this. I, I just don't. I, I'm beginning to wonder whether he has any influence whatsoever because he seems to be half. He seems to be as frustrated as we are as fans. And yeah. and I and I and I think we're going to see that again on Saturday. Yeah, you saw that after Ipswich, didn't you? The kind of frustrations coming out. He, he started. It was it was almost blaming like the. Um, I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't blaming the the infrastructure and the the training. Um, the training set up and whatever that we've got, but he, he was obviously hinting that Ipswichers were a lot better than what than what we'd got in a, in a roundabout way. And then obviously, yeah, he came out and he was visibly angry, which it was it. He was every right to do so, weren't he? Really, because I think he has backed his players up until that point, hadn't he? But he, he really, you know, laid into him, didn't he, on Monday? I think, I think, he, I think he's backed him beyond. I mean, I think you know, you look at Bambo, uh, he, he's just certainly backed Bambo. Um, Do you know what? You surprised me that Bambo started on Monday, because he, obviously mm-hmm. he, he's going through. Um, he's doing Ramadan at the moment, isn't he? So he, you know he's fasting and everything else. Uh, I think, and obviously he wasn't going to play on Friday. It was it was supposed to be Bernard until the last minute, but Bambo came in and obviously he, he, he applauded him for for playing, even though he's been you know going through Ramadan and everything think, else. Yeah. But then I thought I thought on Monday, surely if that's the case, he wouldn't then play on Monday three days later, but. Of course, you think did. It's an attitude, James, you think it's an attitude because Bambo, on his social media, is a quite passionate and quite like a bit like Paul. You know, I'm yeah. sorry, it's, it's, we're going to have. A, do you think it's an attitude thing? An interesting thing when Peter was speaking um, a moment ago. What really made me think is I was watching the I follow and it was Middlesbrough commentary, and one of the Middlesbrough commentators was talking about Marvin Johnson. And he said, Marvin Johnson was here for four years and I think he fell out with every manager that was... <laughs> and you start to think, oh, for God's sake. You know what I mean? It's like... Well, he fell out with Cisco, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, has he fallen out with all? You, 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 <laughs> you hope not, but... Well, I mean, he's, play, he's, play, he's playing him, but then again, I suppose, who else does he play? He can play Reese James, but he's not played at all this season. Now you've got to sometimes put it to one ton side. But on, on Bambo, as much as we, we can berate him for his performances and think that he's a... Is a you know is a disaster waiting to happen. He, he he does leave it all you know. You can't you can't fault his effort. He does try, doesn't he? I suppose you can give him that. No, absolutely. I mean, he's built like I'd want him to be built as a centre back. But <laughs> I've got to say, 
that I've never seen like a centre back panic, even on like a sprint. <laughs> you know, even like somebody goes past me, you think he's going to win this race, but he's going to do something really. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's and it's like you know, he goes up for. I mean, t- to be honest, Kadam Arthur's goal was his, wasn't it? But it's like I said to my mate, I turned around, and went, "How the fuck has he missed that? How did he miss that header in the first place, Bambo?" Yeah. It was like, late but yeah i just feel that once again this summer regardless of what happens we're rebuilding again and it's not just the profitable of the squad it's the actual spine and until we get some sort of change we're just not going to progress because it's a rebuild again and do you know what it's going to be quote this quote this james three weeks into next season they need time to settle they need time to gel yes yeah, you're going to get it from a large section of the fan base, aren't you? Um, but do you know what? I, I, I never get that. I never get that comment. Whilst, whilst you know, all right, it should be. It's true. It's as if the first game of the season comes as a shock to everyone. No, the, fir- the first time. game of the season is the, is pretty much the same date every single every single year. Like, why do we always get? Why do we have to give a team ten games to to gel? Like, why? <laughs> I feel it's a mentality thing that's pushed on us, you know. I mean, you know, I'm lucky enough to, like I say, work for some big clubs, and I come back to support my own club, and I see so many things that frustrate me, and so many things that we're supposed to take on as fans, which not not many other fan bases would take on. You know, the increased prices of tickets. The first thing I think, and I'm sure a lot of our fans think, when you pay more money, I want to see better players. If I'm paying 40 quid a ticket, I'll pay 40 quid, but I want to see a great player. Unfortunately, we've fallen and stumbled on Pervader, and we've had Barry Bannon working his bollocks for years because there's nobody else with the qualities that they have. And I feel that we're just too accepting. It, it's yeah. all too accepting. You know, if we get relegated... Oh, it's okay. Because, you know, one of the phrases I hate, and I hate this, and I don't know why, is I'll support them through thick and thin. Exactly what Chan Seedy wants to hear. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, um, QPR obviously limited the tickets to the home fans. Um, everyone said, oh, yeah, but they can sell their own, you know, they can sell all their home tickets and everything else. Obviously, we've given... Stoke an extra thousand tickets, and we've given them the bottom tier of the West Stand. Of course, obviously, I tweeted that. Um, again, you know, a lot of people here. You know, another one. We need all the cash we can get for one. Stop slagging the club no, off. Um, no. the, the more in their way end, the better. Do you know what? Do you know what? Let, let, let me just let me just have a point on this. We need all the cash we can get. Okay, right. So, what's been done to generate cash, which is so easy with a fan base that we've got? We have got such a giving fan base that will give money, will buy shirts if they're there at the right price, will buy products, you know, will will go to the fan zone if it's owned by the club, will spend money. I've sat in meetings when there's been some really, really good people there offering to help the club, and they've not been taken up on it. So, this, you know, I understand football fair play. What goes in has to go out. Well, I don't understand, you know, why isn't there more being done to, to bring money in? And, yeah. and it's very said there is, but I don't I don't see it. My my point on all that is, yeah, what thousand tickets, what's that gonna be? They're gonna be thirty quid each, thirty grand. What what's what's thirty grand in the grand scheme of things to a football club? It's nothing, is it? It's like, you know, two two players weeks wages, if that, then and then that's that money's gone. And you could argue, well, it's better having that than, than not having that. But for me, I think when you you know, if it, if it's first game of the season, do whatever you want give all your tickets away it's first game of the season don't really i don't really care like you know but when you're into the the final six games of the season and you know we we need all those small advantages that we can get in my opinion and giving the other team another extra thousand tickets just so the only reason you're doing it is to get the money you're not doing it for any other reason you're not doing it Someone else, someone else said, "Oh, the atmosphere is much better when the away ends full." Yeah, yeah because because no, what? Because the away fans sing like that. that that's not that doesn't make it a better atmosphere. They just I drown. Think, they just drown us out. Like that's that, think, that, it's embarrassing. I think it is embarrassing. Do you know what's going to be funny though? I'll tell you what's going to be funny. Gasama and Masaba, I think, are our players. Are they not? Are they our players? Yes, they are. Yes, yeah. We signed them on a permanent. And they better get ready because it's going to. Completely different ball game for them. They're going to get kicked to death. And Danny Danny Roll should maybe sit down and play him some League One videos because <laughs> they're not going to like it. And to be honest with you, if we go down, I'd let them play a game in League One because 
it, 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 this is this is the mentality that needs to be brought in. You know, I, I, when I'm looking at looking at back at the um, the Middlesbrough game, and you were saying about uh, I think you and Peter were saying that about the argument between Johnson and Fameo. I've got to say, for me, one of the few players that came out of any credit was Fameo on that game. I mm-hmm. thought he cut Johnson so many times, and I, I don't think he's played that bad. And you can see how passionate he is, but oh, you know, it's just if they're not all pulling. What 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 do we do? And and I, I really really worry because the rebuild next year, if in, in whichever league we're in, I mean, can you imagine the rebuild in the championship if we're going to get uh, Ashley McMockmingle from FC Sparta Prague? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like he's played times for the under 12, 12 Finnish side. <laughs> well, just fetch Delgado back for that's all. We'll do. <laughs> Don't even mention. I tell you what, that's another myth. Delgado's been injured ever since Cisco. What a mystery that is. Yeah, that you is uh, that that is a bit of a mystery, and it go on, go on, Paul. Then do you do you think there's going to be any changes for for the the, the game against QPR? Obviously, Paveda was on the bench uh, on yeah. on Monday. He, he came back on, you know, for the you know for a couple of minutes. Or I'd like to see him up front with Ugbo. I think Ugbo's quality. I mean, I know. I know he wasn't his best the other day, but he does put a shift in. I mean, he was, you know, I think Ugbo and Paveda, I, I, the only other change I can potentially see, I'd like Bernard, but I don't think it's going to happen. No. I'd also armour back in somewhere because I just think that we're really, do you know, I'd pl- I, I'd go for 3-5-2 because the midfield's so weak. I'd stick somebody behind Bannon and Volts if it has to be and just go, look, just, just sit there and just tackle and you need Bannon for we need Bannon further forward. I don't care what anyone else says. You need you need him much further forward. He's that player that can pick out that pass. And I don't want him picking out a pass as a quarterback, you know, just in front of you know, just on edge of eighteen yard box, as in our eighteen yard box launching a seventy, eighty yard Constant diagonal. Do you know what I, mean? I don't Constant want it, I don't want him doing that. I want it, I want him, you know, outside their box, you know, threading the ball through a need you know, needle through a Whatever they say, <laughs> uh, uh, no, 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 that's not needle through an ace. That, that's totally the wrong saying. But anyway, do you know what I mean? Threading it through the eye of a needle. I got there in the end, and okay. uh, an Ugbo, you know, Ugbo getting on end of it and, and just getting inside that eighteen yard box and and slotting it past the oh. goalkeeper. I do, I, that's where I want to see Barry Baden play if much further forward. We play much Think better Ugbo. as a team when he's there. So maybe maybe, maybe you put Palmer along, alongside Volks and shove. Shove Bannon further forward, Paveda on um, on one side, Ugbo through the middle, and um, and one of them Masaba and Gasama duo on the other side. I don't know. I don't think Palmer's a bad shout at wing back. Me, I, I, I think I think he plays better at wing back to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, I think I, I wouldn't mind seeing him at wing back where I offer tucked in, uh, he echoed in the middle, organising and shouting for Mayo at the other side, uh, and Johnson hopefully with his cigar out this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've been a little bit of a shift, but I, I, I feel that you know I, I, I've got to give credit to who's the recruitment guy? Is it Kevin? Somebody? Is it who's who's there now? Is it Kevin? Um, the guy? Who did he brought in? I can't remember his name. Uh... <clears throat> would have been great signings for us. I mean, we'd have been down. Kevin Beadle. That's it. We'd have been whether he's you know done anything with those two or not. I think that they've given us a hope. And something to watch. Um, I mean, again, hey, Dawson we're... played in the under under twenty ones yesterday. Someone was saying earlier, is that uh, a sign that he might be playing in the first team? I don't know. Mm, well, I, I, he's got to play him, and he's got to he's got to play him somewhere. Otherwise, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? We, we, we've got a lone keeper as our number one. We talk about spine and structure of a side. We, we have not even owned a keeper, and it, it's. I don't know. It's again. It, it, it just seems like uh, a complete same as last year, a reprint of last year when we were talking about the squad being rebuilt. Yeah. You know how many players are going and how many players are coming in, and you know DC might get it right, but I just keep thinking while ever we're in the free market and, and where what we're paying, it, it's 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 quite scary, isn't it? Because you, you look at players like um, Gasama, who's obviously brilliant on his day. And then you look at, well, what else did PSG release that year that we didn't get? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, there must be so many young players that have been released that still haven't got a club, which leads me to, I, I think we'd all like to believe that they're ready for this this league 
and they'd be ready next year. But I, I don't I don't know. I think you hit on it before I even spoke to you earlier about quality of the squad. The quality of the squad. I think yeah, it's just, it's I, think, just I think we've just been I think we've been optimistic as as, as Wednesday fans as we are, and that Danny Rills, you know, turned water into wine and got the yeah. best that he can out of some of these players. But I just I just think we're just left wanting. Um and look, it could all turn around. We could we could go to QPR, could go to Loftus Road on Saturday, thump and three, four nil and and we're out of relegation zone and this show next week will could be totally different to this one and you you never know. Um the thing is I think it's more likely the the opposite happening, which is to, which is just the start reality. But you know, we we keep believing, don't we? We keep we keep paying our hard earned money, we keep gonna follow the team and um and yeah, I'm gonna use your saying that you hate following through thick and thin. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it is, it is true. It is true. Right, I'm going to wrap things up there. Um, massive thanks to Paul, to Peter, to Steve as well, who've, uh, who've come up. Everyone that's uh, that's commented as well. Just re- read one more out. Matt said on uh, on YouTube, would rather stay up than 30 grand from having more away fans in. It'll give them more of a lift in a game that we need to win to stay up. Yeah, my point exactly. Look, giving the other team... A thousand extra tickets doesn't automatically mean you're going to lose the game. You know, um, we could win the game regardless. But I just think that we need to have Hillsborough full. We we see we've seen what a full Hillsborough can do. We only have to go back, you know, less than a year ago to to show exactly that. But um, but hey ho, look, I'm not in charge of the ticket prices. And um, <laughs> I think it's here to stay. Right again, massive thanks to everyone that's got involved this evening. Um, we will be back next week at the same time, Wednesday at 8 o'clock, YouTube on Twitter, Twitter Spaces as well. So do make sure you get involved. If you want to, if you've just joined us and you want to listen back to the, the full episode, it is over, well, it will be over on Patreon in about the next five or 10 minutes. So head over to patreon.com forward slash WTID pod and you can sign up free seven day trial, get on the discord, get involved in all the chat and the discussions that there is every single day. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And we'll see you all next week. Cheers guys.